Yeah. Hello, good morning. Today's video is going to be about how I made this dress. This dress is a dress, it's basically a replica of a dress that I used to own. I made it from memory. The dress that I used to own somehow vanished and it like just was never seen again. I have no photos of it, I have no record of it, I can't even remember where I got it from, so I think it turned out really well, but obviously there's no reference, so I don't know. It's also incredibly short, and it's currently raining, so probably not the most appropriate thing to be wearing right now. It's also a look with the boots. I spent a lot of time on this yesterday when I should have been doing other things, so I'm feeling a little bit guilty. But oh well, these things happen. Come along for the ride and see if you can follow along. Maybe this is going to be some sort of tutorial. I can't remember where I left off or what I included to record or not. So it's going to be a wild ride. Uh, strap yourselves in. Okay, so to start off with, I drew a quick sketch of what I remember the dress kind of looked like. It uh, folded in the front and connected with some buttons and had some seams down the kind of the princess seam line, which is that line in the middle of the pieces. The back was pretty simple and the straps were connected with buttons just over the shoulders and I thought that that was a really nice way to fasten them. I decided to double face everything, so I had to cut four pieces of everything and two straps. The fabric is from the Remnant Warehouse here in Sydney. I picked it up on a whim when I was picking up some other fabric. It's a linen viscose blend in this lovely light pink colour. This is a dress that I bought to replace the other one that vanished. I don't love it and it shrank in the wash, but I used it as a kind of a guide to measure what shape and size the bodice pieces needed to be. Well, I made a cut, so we're just going to go with it. And then I just committed to cutting this stuff out, which is really not my style. Usually I follow a pattern, but I was just going to go for it. Miles and I are going to the farm tomorrow, and I want to try and finish this dress that I started the other day, um, this pink dress. But I realized that I need some thread and I need some buttons, but I also forgot to bring a piece of the fabric, so I'm going to go buy some thread now and some buttons now. For spotlight and hope that they're the right type at least the thread i don't know i should have i really I, I meant to bring a piece of the fabric earlier but i just forgot anyway let's go there Going home to procrastinate the stuff I have to do by thinking about all these other projects. Miles and I came up to the farm last night and yeah. I'm very glad to be here. I have some uni work to do this morning and then I'm gonna get into sewing later. And I'm hoping that I can sit outside because it's not too windy yet and it's not too cold. It should be warmer than this for October, but oh well, these things happen. La Nina and stuff. Just getting breakfast and then get cracking.
I was up to with this. But I think what I did was, oh yeah, I did the front pieces. The two front pieces. So I think I'm just going to sew. It's windy out here. I'm just going to sew the front seams of both of those pieces together and then cut the back pieces and then I think cut the skirt pieces and then the straps and put it all together to see what happens. Since I'd already cut out the front pieces so I just dive straight in and sewed together all the pieces at that front princess seam line. I really did natter my way through this whole day so Consider yourselves lucky that I'm recording this voiceover instead of you having to listen to my rambling. Oh, this is cold. So we can outdoors. Ah! I really didn't last very long in the outdoor sewing experience because of the wind. So I just sewed the front pieces and then I packed up and I moved everything inside. One thing that's super important when you're sewing is to press a lot of stuff. So I pressed open all of these seams before I continued. This is the thread. And that's the color of the fabric. You can't even see that, but trust me, it works. I usually sew with a pattern and so I had to sit down quite a lot of times and actually plan what I had to do because I was struggling otherwise. After sewing the front pieces I then had to do some calculations and I cut a couple of straps. Well I didn't cut them, I actually just ripped them. Once I had the two straps, I folded them in half and gave them a press, and then I went to the machine and I just sewed them together. I think I used half inch seams for most of this thing, which is weird because in Australia we use metric system, but my brain is more used to inches for sewing because that's like all the other patterns that I've used. Here I'm just trimming the edge and a hot tip is to cut at the corner, just cut really close to that edge. Then I turned them out in a really complicated way. There was a much easier way to do this, but I failed. And then I pressed the straps. This is a little bit tricky, but in order for a really clean way to attach the straps, I kind of sandwiched the raw edge of the front of the strap in between the two front pieces. So you can see I'm here and then I'm gonna sew along the top edge and the front edge, and I'm gonna leave the side seam open. And as you can see, when I turn it to the right way out, the strap is very neat and tidy, tucked inside the seam. I trimmed the edges again, and I pressed everything to make sure it was lying nice and flat. After I'd done both of the front sides, I realized that the fit wasn't really great and that I would need to, at some point, put a bit of a dart in the bust because it was otherwise it just wasn't gonna fit very well. Then I pinned it to my activewear and measured around the back to see what size the back pieces needed to be. I did some calculations, I drew a little bit of a sketch, and then I just went ahead and I cut it out. I barely even measured it. Here's a taste of the rambling and the nattering that I did all day long while I was making this dress. So I thought that I was going to have this done in like half an hour. It's been 45 minutes and I'm just now getting the back pieces together. I cut them out and I stuffed up once and I sewed them in the wrong spot. But I just wanted to show you 
I can actually show you. But I just sew them together at this, what is like the center back part. And then I'm gonna sew them along the top. And then I think I might end up, ooh, it's raining, putting some darts in just here and here. Just to give it a little bit more shape than it has. I guess I could, mm, yeah, that's probably, maybe I could just cut that. I'm just gonna do that and I'm gonna pin it to the front and see what it looks like. I was happy, so I French seamed the side seams. So I just finished French seaming the side seams. Go and watch another video about how to do a French seam and this will make way more sense. Basically, you sew wrong side to wrong side and then you cut off the excess and then you sew right side to right side so that all of that extra raw edge is now enclosed in this very neat seam. And that's a great way to finish stuff if you don't have a way to finish the edges of a seam. It takes twice as long as you have to sew every seam twice, but it, it ends up looking really nice and professional. It's not perfect, but I feel like it's going to do the job. Since I'd finished the bodice part, I then had to calculate how I was going to do the skirt part. I needed front sections and back sections, here's a better view, and I needed four of them and I wanted the skirt to kind of have a little bit of an uneven, sort of like a curved hem. And because I was so lost without pattern instructions, I wrote my own pattern instructions to follow. Looking back now, I regret making these pieces so short. I could have made them longer and then shortened them afterwards. Also, I think I put a little bit too much angle on the bottom edge of the skirt pieces and not enough curve, so it kind of looks like this weird sort of pointy bit on the bum, which is not great, but oh well, I'll live with it. From memory, I sewed all of the side seams, and then I sewed the centre back seam, and then I sewed both sections of skirt together before turning them the right way around. On home stretch now. Um, basted together the two front pieces at the waistband. Hopefully that makes sense. Uh, and then I'm just doing the back seam, centre back seam, and then I'll do the rest. I really want to get this finished. Time magic, not stolen. So this is me measuring where I had to sew the seam so that it would meet very neatly at the bodice section. And then I sewed all of those skirt sections together and I turned it the right way around to double check before I finished sewing it to the bodice. It was at this point I realized the error of my ways in the length. Mostly though, very pleased. Uh... All right, I'm just going to trim the insides of this, press it all down, and then attach it to the top.
how the dress turned out and I'm very pleased with it. It's a little short, the hem is a little wonky, but it will do the trick. It is amazing how much it feels like the old dress that went missing. I wish that I could show you a picture just how closely this one matches it, which is really cool. I ended up having to cross over the straps because I put the buttonholes a little bit too low, but I'm gonna put some new ones a little bit higher so that I can wear it not crossed over as well as crossed over. It's nice to have the option. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Fit issues aside, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. That would be amazing. Thank you and I'll see you next time.